out your back, even family that's amongst you. Got a slut ass auntie and a cool ass uncle. Kinda won't front you, but let you out the whip around the block like a stunt. Don't do a lot of bumping. When your mama call, when her ex man jumping, all you see is feet and her ex man stomp. That's my uncle D. That's why the Blizzard King coming. Hot girl winner, Blizzard King summer. My we succumbing, no singing and no humming, told me we shall overcome it, got him leaking, I'm the plumber, my nigga made Zoom look cool, yeah you funny, what else Uncle D gotta prove more money, Hope look at tunes, but this gotta shun him, brotherhood over any woman, cause if she play her role, then she fam, then she good, when we say brother, my sister, we mean the hood, now homie pop the trunk, it's been reeking just like a skunk, we can swim your knowledge, your dishes, just how you want, he just run his mouth and that bullshit, we the bomb. In a sunken place, he's sinking that drunk. He don't even drink, and I tell you that drunk. My nephew told me I wanna be just like my own. He don't even drink, and I tell you that drunk. My nephew told me I wanna be just like my own. Brand good, suit and tie, lawyer, repping manhood. He don't tap dance, he overstand, he playing good. Titles don't get it, most of us getting ambush. Mayonnaise, clam bush, buck broken, man touch. Woke up in the morning, got walk, that's on my mind. Peace can only come when your law and order divine. Hey, I stay entwined, you keep a criminal mind How you think I shine and stay from falling behind? He got open eyes and can't see it, he blind You nice all the time, they tell you water is wine Slaughter all your sons and leave your daughters behind All she wanna do is flash that big behind The music is the garbage they use to take you down You used to rap intelligent, now you rapping like clowns My prerogative, you thinking like Bobby Brown Rest in peace to Whitney, Christina, that's underground Wake up years later, you been the f around Water up to your neck and watching him as you drown. How you throw a touchdown again and you out of bounds? All the black men getting passports out of town. Homie pop the trunk, it's been reeking just like a skunk. We can sip your knowledge, your dishes just how you want. He just run his mouth and that shit we debunk. In the sunken place, he's thinking that's a good song. He don't even drink and I tell you that the trunk. My nephew told me I wanna be just like my aunt. He don't even drink and I tell you that the drunk. My nephew told me I wanna be just like my aunt. My uncle D, 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 favorite uncle, uncle D, my uncle D, my uncle D, my uncle D, favorite uncle, my uncle D, my uncle D, my favorite uncle, Blizzard King, uncle D, uncle D, uncle D, my favorite uncle, what? Uncle D, my favorite uncle, my uncle D. D. Yeah, I'm OG.
What up, what up, what up? Welcome to the broadcast. Shout out to everybody out there on YouTube, man. Everybody on Instagram. Everybody everywhere, man. Big shout out to you guys. My name is Dennis Sperling. Uncle D, also known as the Blizzard King, man, because I'm here to give you this cold, hard truth. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button, man. Show me some love. I appreciate it. So um, let's go ahead and just jump straight in it. I want to share with you all a uh, video that popped up on my Facebook feed. The first thing I'm going to do is, uh, well, you know, let me let me first do this, man. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, guys. It's always an honor and pleasure to have everybody up in here. We are marching towards 100,000 followers, subscribers. I'm really excited about that. And uh, uh, so I just thank you guys for your patronage. Now, what you look from a young woman who is telling a story of how she got her boyfriend set up to uh, get unalived by her brother. And she basically tells a story about how she purposely inflicted bruises and harm on herself to enrage her brothers so that they would then come down and then unalive her boyfriend at the time. The crazy part about this is the brother ended up going to jail for 25 years. I'm gonna let it play. Let me know if y'all can hear this, okay? Let me know if you can hear it. It's uh, recalibrating right now. Can y'all hear? Now, you brothers are saying you can't hear. Y'all saying you can't hear, right? Is that right? Let me see if I can reload this. Uh, ever since uh, YouTube started fooling around with this stuff, it, it's made it really difficult to uh, get this to cooperate. Let me see. Also, sure. Thing. Hold on one minute. I will do my best to get this reloaded back up again. Let me see. Okay, we'll try it this way. Let me know if you guys can hear this. All right, we're gonna try it again. Let me know if you can hear. Let me know if you can hear. Mm. All right, so. So you guys, can, if you if you didn't hear that, basically, okay. So basically, what that young woman was doing was confessing. And man, I wish you could hear it. I'm gonna put the link to that uh, actual page. It's on my Facebook page. I'll go over there and check it out on my Facebook page if you want to. Really sorry about that. I, I'm still working out this, uh, this this new schematic that uh, YouTube has going on. Bottom line, she said, look, I got my first love set up. I found uh, I, I was looking through his phone and uh, come to find out he was talking to a whole lot of women and she got jealous of that. So she went down there and cussed out the man's father. I'm sorry. She went out there and cussed down the man's mother. And, uh, you know, he didn't do anything to her, but she decided that she wanted to uh, she wanted vengeance. You know, she wanted an enforcer because her feelings were hurt. And so what she ended up doing was hitting herself in the face on the way back home. And what that led to is her brother uh, becoming enraged. And he went down and uh, unalive the fella, her first love, <laughs> okay? So this should be telling you something. Now, here's another situation that's hot off the presses. This is from March 2nd. What you have here is a dad, a dad who helps kill or who helps unalive his daughter's boyfriend. Apparently the daughter called over 
And these are the two culprits. Let me show you the two culprits down here somewhere. Hopefully I'll find them. I got actually they on the thumb. You're looking at a situation where we got another death by simp. Okay. We got two lives lost. Right. And, and and now at this particular situation, as far as those folks in DeKalb County, both of them are arrested by the police. So what we're going to talk about today is death by simp. Somebody type death by simp in the chat room. Somebody type crash out kings in the chat room. <laughs> Somebody type crash out kings in the chat room. Let's do that. And I want to talk to all you men who are here today. And I hope this is a lesson that you all can learn. I'm going to give you a little backstory. So basically, the dad, uh, he fired on the boyfriend and he missed. And then the boyfriend returned fire and he shot the dad in the hip. Then the girlfriend whipped out a gun or either picked up her dad's gun and then she unalived the boyfriend. Multiple gunshots. And now both dad and daughter are in jail for that unal for that unaliving. Now, me personally, I hope both of them, I hope both of them serve the time in prison that they're supposed to once they're found guilty. Um, you know, based on what I see in this situation, you have a the investigators identified Roy Ricas. That's just come on, Roy Ricas. Somebody type Roy Ricas Shaw. 47 years old. That's him. He is involved in a shooting. Um, because his 25 year old daughter, Nina Shaw, okay, had an argument with her boyfriend, right? Boyfriend, uh, and their father then shows up to instead of calling 911, instead of leaving, dad shows up. Okay, now keep in mind, I want y'all to understand something. Okay, Roy Ricas Shaw has been arrested at least a dozen times since 1994 for various crimes, including assault, disorderly conduct, and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. All right. Now, initially, the reports came out that they didn't know why these two people were arguing. It was unknown. Shout out to my man, uh, Mile High Gambler. I know it ain't much, but uh, but at least for a cup of coffee, just got promotion. Just got a promotion and nice pay raise. That's what's up, man. Congratulations. Starting this Monday through thanks to yours and uh, Mr. Sammy's advice. You guys are the truth. Man, thank you so much, brother. That's inspirational, bro. Shout out to you, man. Keep up the good work, man. Keep up the good work. For the most part, if you finish high school, you get out of job. If you get a job and you work, you can work yourself out of poverty in this country. I don't care what any of these blackity blacks got to say. If you graduate from high school, you don't have children, okay, before you get yourself established, before you get yourself either married or at least established, you can work your way out of poverty. You don't have to do all that other stuff, that, that those pipe dreams. You don't have to do that, man. So shout out to you, man. Stay on your grind, my high gambling, man. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate that, that motivation. But uh, back to the subject at hand, okay? So this daughter, she calls the father up and says that old buddy is being abusive to me, okay? Now, um, my thing is this, you're protecting your daughter by unalive, by coming to uh, uh, unalive someone. This is someone else's son over an argument where your daughter says she, he was being abusive. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Let's think about this for a minute. All that we know about the modern woman here in the United States, in Western countries. You just gonna believe your daughter. Believe her. She said he was abusing me. 
What if she was lying? See, we're not talking about some God-fearing daughter, okay? In a God-fearing country. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a young American woman who was raised in a culture where women are never held accountable. So even if she's lied before, she hasn't been held accountable. She's probably done all sorts of stuff and got in the past. So why wouldn't this be any different? See, here's what I understand. Let me, I want, I want to go ahead and, and jump into this, man. Women continue to use men as their attack dogs. And men continue to fall for it. Lovely ladies, the lovely ladies, uh, uh, black women, we're going to call them by name. They've been getting black men killed for a long time. And they've con it lied and continue to lie. White women, they've <laughs> gotten a lot of black men killed in, in our time over here. But the one thing they share in common is that lie. And then you got the simps who are prone to believe these lies. Now, if I'm going to jump back to the black women, the lovely ladies, you black women pretend that you're not protected. And every day I see situations where a father comes to try to help his daughter out and the father is shot. I saw a situation in, in Georgia back in 2018 where a young man was trying to protect his girlfriend from her father. And he ended up unaliving her father. And you lovely ladies, you black American women love saying black men don't protect you. It's just not true. And it never has been true. The truth is, black women want random black men, not just their own family, to crash out for them. That's what you want. Because the truth is, you feel as though we are your servants to be sacrificed. You feel as though you own us. You feel as though you're better than us. You feel as though, as though in order for us to true, prove that we really, really care about black women, we got to be willing to sacrifice not to save your life, but to help polish up those bruised egos that you have when your boyfriend cheats on you. That's what you want. You want us to be your enforcers. And you black men need to stop letting these women put batteries in your back to go jump out of a window and ruin your life. This KK Keisha and her pookie father, they both need to go to prison. He's been to prison. And she needs to go. And they need to be in cells right down the hall from each other. You brothers need to be careful about running over to women's uh, houses and places when she says that her boyfriend or her husband did something to her and, and then come to find out it's a lie. You need to stop allowing yourselves to be put in potential dangerous or deadly situations for women, even if it's your daughter. Yes, fellas, even if it is your daughter. So you brothers aren't willing to be honest about women. And you definitely aren't willing to be honest about the women in your lives and what they're about. Many of them don't submit to order or proper order. They're not cooperative. They're not submissive. Many of them are belligerent and disrespectful. And this is who you are trying to protect, quote unquote. Let me say this. Once a man takes a wife, once a man decides to take a woman, woman under his possession, he's responsible for her. And with responsibility comes authority. She becomes his problem, not yours. 
And you shouldn't be concerning yourself with any man that one of your female relatives, including your mama and your daughter, is banging, especially if she chose him and you had nothing to do with that decision. Now, now, now let's get into it now. Let's, let's get into it. Hallelujah. What happened in this situation with this 47-year-old Pookie and his 25-year-old daughter? Let me explain what happened. Somebody type Gorilla Games in the chat room. Come on. <laughs> we about to get historical. Somebody type anthropological. Somebody type Gorilla Games in this chat room. They say we are all descended on the lines. We evolved on the lines of the great apes. And what you see that 47-year-old Pookie trying to do is assert dominance over that young man. So he's out here playing Gorilla Games. Ha. Somebody type gorilla game. That's what that's what that's what death by simp is, is going. He's crash shocking. They're out here trying to assert their dominance over other men about women, trying to take these viable females under their control. My question is this: if dad was a jailbird, what kind of relationship did he have with his daughter in the first place? What was her upbringing like? This man has been in and out the penitentiary since 1994. That means he's been in and out of uh, the penitentiary for the past uh, 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 20 years, 30 years. And this girl is 25. So he's a crash out king three or four times over. You a jailbird. And now, instead of having been a good father, your 25-year-old, your quarter of a century year old daughter that you couldn't be there for when she was four, five, 10, 15. Now you're trying to be there for when she's a grown woman with her own man. You're trying to prove something. You're trying to prove that you're the protective father. Look at my thumbnail. The man got damn near a smirk on his face. Seems to me like an older man who's been in and out the penitentiary and has talked to other men who've been in the penitentiary would know that there are a lot of stupid reasons that men go to jail, and this is one of the main ones. But instead of being a crash out king, instead of, or should I say, instead of knowing better and coming in there with reason, you decided that you're going to go ahead and commit death by self. That's basically what happened. You men with daughters, you should raise your daughters to be more self-disciplined and have a better uh, temperament and be more tactical in their conflict resolution. Because, see, here's what I've learned in my years. Women will always sign you up for a fight, and it's up for you to say no. Some of you fellas, your wife will come home and say, yeah, man, this guy tried to talk to me in the grocery store. Or this one did that to me. Or this one said that to me. Why is that? Huh? That's what men do. But what did you do in response? Did you entertain it? Well, what did you do? Why did he feel so comfortable talking to you like that? Maybe you shouldn't have been there. Maybe you should be with me more. But what you shouldn't do is try to rush down to the grocery store and catch a dude in the parking lot who just tried to flirt with your wife. Because guess what? All that's going to do is, is, is either land you in the penitentiary or a graveyard. The thing is, fellas, you got to understand some these modern women, they don't they don't want you for protection. They know what they need to do if they want to be protected. Don't be places where you got villains and criminals. They want you for retaliation, somebody type retaliation. They don't want protection. They want enforcement. That what they really want is attack dogs. 
That's what they want. They don't want protection. Some of these young women out here are drawn to the worst kind of men. And these women put their whole families in a precarious situation over and over and over again until something big erupts. And now the men in your family got to go put their life on the line for your crazy, ridiculous cousin. And you, you daughter daddies, you girl dads, you're the worst. Because to many of you, your daughters can do no wrong. But in reality, your daughters are agents of chaos. Having a daughter in this climate, this gynocratic, matriarchal climate, it's like a biohazard to the lives of men. Now, the truth is, many of you brothers, uh, many of you, these women growing up, they saw their mothers disrespect their father and the men in their lives. And now your daughter is playing the same deadly games as the mother did. They don't want protection. They want enforcement. You men raise your daughters to be queens. You spoil them to the point that they're too rotten to even be functional in this world. That queen princess treatment is detrimental to them. That's why you gotta be wary, fellas. You gotta be wary of these so-called daddy's girls. It's good that she respects her father. It's good that she loves her father. But if he spoils her, if she's one of these insufferable women, you need to leave her alone, man. You might as well go and get you a stripper because <laughs> you're going to have the same problems. This is why I take my sons overseas and why they're well-traveled. So that they will know they have options. Fit, feminine, beautiful, cooperative women from other cultures that teach their daughters to be, uh, uh, teach their, the women in their cultures to be cooperative, and submissive because you can't you can't that woman is going to keep hell in your house now to think about this situation we're talking about it for those who came in late we're talking about a situation that happened out in georgia um specifically down in dekalb county where both a father and his daughter are now in prison or in jail awaiting trial because the daughter was having an argument with her boyfriend and decided it was a good idea to call dad. Dad being a pookie with a long jail record decided to come over and try to put a, uh, and try to play pew pew life with the man. Missed, got shot in the hip. The daughter apparently picked up a gun and, and, and shot the boy. This is what we talking about. Death by simp. Either way, uh, y'all hit the number one button. We'll be right back. Dennis Burning Podcast. Click your mouth pad. Yeah, we out back. Uh, hit the like, hit subscribe. Don't just hate watch cause we outside. Uh, let them hate watch. Go and play pop. We just lay by. He don't play that. We don't play back. We don't play back. We go way back. Black man, yeah, we earn some. Tune in, gotta learn some. Uncle D Podcast. Bump it. Likes up. Hit the sub button. Black man, yeah, we earn some. Tune in, gotta learn some. Uncle D Podcast. Bump it. Likes up, hit the sub button. This is Dennis Burnin Podcast. Don't just hate, watch. Hit subscribe and let them know we outside. Don't hold hate, donate. Super chat, cash chat. Put something in the collection plate. Church. Church. I want y'all to make sure y'all hit the number one button. And we're going to kind of get back to what we like to do over here, man. I need y'all to check in at a certain point when it's time to check in. I need to check in it, to checking in, to start happening again. We got to go ahead and get this algorithm pumping.
All right, welcome back to the broadcast, man. This is going to spoil and have to be the Blizzard King. And we're talking about proxy violence. We're talking about death by simp. We're talking about uh, two lives lost. We're talking about crash out kings. We're talking about a situation that happened in DeKalb County, one of many that we've seen around the world, around the United States, where men just throw their lives away uh, under the auspices of I'm protecting the women folk in my family. Now, here's the situation, and we kind of recapped this before we took our break. Um, you know, well, well, let me say this. Uh, when I check my numbers, apparently I have about um, one third of you who watch my broadcast and don't subscribe. So that means if I got 30,000 followers or 30,000 people who watch a broadcast, 20,000 of them have subscribed and the rest haven't. I need y'all to subscribe. All the hate watchers out there, that needs to stop. You need to stop the hate watching, baby. I don't like degeneracy. I don't like degenerate behavior because degenerate behavior creates a hell for everybody around it. And nobody can escape the fires of hell. So we need to, all of us, all of us who want better lives and want to do better in life, we need to make sure we do something about this degeneracy that's bubbling up around us and part of what I'm talking about here today is degeneracy. It's the men and the women. Unfortunately, the culture is passed down by the women. The men, I can talk to you. You'll correct yourself. You don't have so much of a problem with what I say. It's the women who have a problem. They are so used to not being corrected for their bad behavior. When you tell them about what they're doing, they call it bashing. Isn't that terrible? Somebody that feels so privileged when you tell them, you know, your breath stinks right now. You probably should brush your teeth. Oh, that's bashing. Oh, okay. Well, you know you didn't wash your butt. You wipe your butt real good. You got poop under your fingernails. Oh, you bashing me. All right. Well, you know. Same thing. Well, you know, baby, if you would eat uh, 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 less cheeseburgers every day, that you wouldn't be 245 pounds and five foot five. Oh, you bashing. Damn, I can't tell you nothing. Men, on the other hand, we're, we're allowed or uh, we're forced to accept whatever criticism comes our way. And if we don't, you know, we sensitive and soft. You too short. Don't you hear that all? Where my short kings at? All my short kings out here. How many times has a woman told you too short? Huh? <laughs> all the time. Or you don't drive the right, the not a nice enough car to date me or you don't make enough money. They're always discussing your qualifications. I heard that young lady, Nicki Minaj, get on the internet and say it's uh, the men should only be allowed to discuss their preferences in women behind closed doors. Well, why is it that for the past 50 or 60 years, women have been able to express their preferences in books, radio, TV, on the air, on the street, anywhere they want to, but men can't express their preferences. I thought we were equal. Since when, when is that? When is that that we can't say what we like? Mm -hmm. Most men like an hourglass figure. They like a woman who is uh, slim thick. Some like them a little thicker, but that don't mean blubbery and overweight. Why is it that we can't express our opinions, but you're allowed to express yours in a society that we built? You see? Now, I'm getting off the subject matter a little bit, but the bottom line is we're in a situation where you can't correct women because society has told them that they're above reproach. And when you have one, when you have one group of people that are tied to another group of people that you can't tell anything, then they're gonna lead you off the cliff to damnation. So it is, uh, it is, a, uh, and it, it is imperative that strong men in general, strong black men, strong white men, strong Asian and Latino men. Every man begins to stand up and speak and begin to correct this era that those folks, uh, uh, those men who came before us put in place with their laws and the allowance of feminism and, 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 and you know, feminism, I guess it was a good idea to get women equal rights. Hey, great. Right. Yeah. I don't want, you know, you should be able to, if you're working, you should get the same amount of money. Right. But now women want superior rights to the point now that you can't even criticize them. And so that's why you have situations like this. A lot of you dudes out there like, man, but what would I do if this was my daughter? Well, we're going to get into that right now. The thing I want you to understand in this situation we're dealing with, 
And uh, for those of you guys who came late, there was a situation out in uh, um, Georgia where a, a young woman got her father and her boyfriend. One died and one's going to jail and she's going to jail with him. Now, the thing about this young woman, she knew who her father was. And that's why she called him to finish her business. Shout out to my man, Cod God, Big Washington. Thank you so much, man. Don't believe in the B, in the B movement. <laughs> Shout out to you, bro. Thank you so much for my super chats and cash apps. I appreciate you guys coming through. I don't think I received any. Uh, uh, well, I'm sorry. I don't think I received any cash apps, but the cash app is actually floating across the bottom of the screen. But um, anyway, so she knew who her dad was. She called him up to come handle uh, her business for her, right? And that's why they both locked up in the cell together. You see? See, again, women are always talking about black men don't protect black women. No, you want us to crash out at the drop of a dime. That's what you want. See? Now, I want to talk to the fathers out there, all you girl dads out there. Some of y'all are saying, well, as a father, because I'm a father too, I have sons, all right? I don't have daughters. But some of y'all are saying, as a father, I'm coming if my daughter calls me. You see? And some of you guys are reasonable. you like, I'm going to come over there, and I'm thinking I'm not going over there to unalive anybody or put hands on anybody, but I'm going to be ready just in case. That's what you said. That that's the that's how that's how you end up in the vicinity. I'm coming over there to be reasonable, but I'm gonna be ready just in case. Let me tell y'all a story. For those of you guys who read my books, Rules to Live By. So I'm uh, it's 1993 or something like that, man. I'm at Grambling State University. I've been there for a year. I came back from the summer vacation. I had a little job working at what was at that time a place called Home Base, which was bought out by Home Depot, working in the electrical department over off uh, Century Boulevard in Inglewood. And, uh, you know, so I'm back in school, kind of just really enjoying being back in school because, you know, I, at that point, I'd spent a summer in South Central. I'm like, man, I'm ready to get back to, to Grambling. You know, I, I kind of got used to that Southern living. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't really have a taste for the ghetto life anymore. You know, having been born and raised in South Central between there and Third War, Houston, Texas, it's like, man, I, <laughs> I'm tired of it. You know, I'm ready to ease on up out of here and get back to Grambling. I'm really enjoying it. I, my first year of college, I got a 3.7 GPA, which is the best grades I'd ever gotten in my life. Shout out to all my HBCU folks. Uh, shout out to all y'all, man. HBCUs, man, are the best thing that could have happened to black to the black black community. Thank God that is your lifeline. Um, but um, either way, so I'm back there, man. This is my this is my place of tranquility, and um, so I'm standing by this tree uh, in front of the student union. And uh, I'm talking to a group of girls that I know, you know, and and some dude from like 20, 30 feet away is just eyeballing me. Just wreck in my mind, he was eyeballing me, right? And it, it's the first week back, so you got a bunch of freshmen, the ones that hadn't got sent home yet. They're standing there and hanging out, and everybody just posted up. It's dark. Everybody's checked in. The parents are gone. It's probably like a Friday. And, you know, we just posted up in front of the cafeteria between that and the student union. And the kid in my mind is eyeballing me. I hadn't had anything to drink. I didn't even drink at the time. So I decide that, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm going to walk over here and, and just tell the brother, hey, man, calm down. You ain't got to be reckless eyeballing me like that. Why did I go over there? Because in my irrational 19-year-old mind, I didn't like the idea of him reckless eyeballing me. That was something that I brought from South Central Los Angeles. And I was going to go over there and speak rashly to him and explain to him that, hey, this is not the place for that. You can at, at, be at ease. That was something that I picked up at Grambling. You see, being at a black college, I'd been, it's been a year, you know? And uh, either way, I put myself within striking distance. 
And uh, when I went over and said, and said, hey, bro, you don't have to, you don't have to look at me like that, you know? Okay, you could take that many different ways. Now, if you fresh out the hood and somebody's saying, why are you looking at me like that? You gonna, that person's going to take that as a threat. But in effect, what I'm trying to tell y'all is, fellas, I put myself in the vicinity. And once, he, once I said, you don't have to be looking at me like that, he took it. He said, what? He saw it as a threat. And guess what happened? He hit me. He hit me right in this eye right here. Bam. He hit me right in that eye. Uh, and I remember he hit me again and it started bleeding. And I was shocked. Okay. Because, see, I'm no longer South Central L.A. D. Dennis. I'm not Babyface from Manuel Arts that plays offensive left tackle. I'm a college kid at Grambling State University with a 3.7 GPA majoring in biology. I'm a, I'm a member of the, uh, what was I, uh, you know, the biology club. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, so when the brother took off on me, I was initially shocked. And then after that, once I realized he hit me, I became enraged. Not that I was mad at him, but I was angry because now I have to resort to violence. Now, whatever my rationale was, the initial problem was I put myself in that vicinity. Something told me, yeah, go on over here and talk to him because you don't like what he's doing. He's looking at you crazy. And number two, you're going to tell him. Maybe my intentions were good. But when I took my butt over there, I put myself in my vicinity. When your daughter or your sister or your mama calls you up to say, yeah, Earl is putting hands on me. Deshaun is putting hands on me. We not getting along. I just want you to come over here. You're putting yourself in the vicinity of the danger, of the conflict. See, so when you fathers say, hey, I'm coming if my daughter calls, I'm not thinking to do any harm. I'm not trying to unalive anybody. I'm not here to put hands on it, but I'm going to be ready. That's the setup. You don't think women realize that if I get these two men together, I can sit back behind them and, and I don't have to fight. That's the setup. Because guess what? As soon as you show up, you just added gasoline to the fire. Now, what happened in that story? After he hit me two times, I grabbed him by his neck. I swung him around. I was on top of him with both of my hands wrapped around his neck as his friend was kicking me in the side of my head. And just at the point, I had the thought go from my mind to my hands. Let me grab him by his neck and begin to bash his head into the concrete right there between the cafeteria and the favorite student union, which I had passed hundreds of times on my way to class, about four or five Grambling State police officers jumped on me. And it took everything they had to get me up off of them. Because you're talking about a 19-year-old former offensive lineman who had been lifting weights pretty much since he was 12 years old, strong, angry, and ferocious. I'm something to deal with now. Even in jujitsu, they know that I don't go 100% on them. Matter of fact, one of them told me that today. So imagine me at 19. All of that because I put myself in a situation. I had to go through a hearing. They're about to put me out of school. The only reason they didn't put me out of school is because I was able to say, well, I, I didn't actually hit him. You know, he was trying to explain, but he was choking the hell out of me <laughs> and he was about to try to bash my head into the concrete. That didn't register as fast as, well, he hit me twice and I just held him out to protect him. And then I waited, I held him down on the ground to the police came. You see? But I put myself in that situation. Now, you would expect that from a 19-year-old knucklehead from South Central LA, but you wouldn't expect that from some 45, 47-year-old grown man. Huh? When you show up, brothers, you adding gasoline to the fire. That's what I'm trying to explain to y'all.
You just put gasoline on that fire. Shout out to Clyde. He says, um, uh, what's good, um, those YouTube shorts be on point. I'm on my 30-minute break finishing up my 90-hour work week. That's what I'm talking about. Shout out to all the hardworking blue-collar brothers out there making it happen. Man, I love you, brothers. Man, keep it. We need all y'all, man. And if these rotten uh, lovely ladies don't appreciate you, man, I, it's a Venezuelan uh, uh, a princess walking up on the border right now to come be with you, okay? I'm telling you, just – she don't even need to speak English, man. She's going to cook and clean, whether you in Atlanta uh, uh, or Nebraska. <laughs> She'll be here soon. So y'all keep keep doing what you're doing. Shout out to my man, Griff. Griff, I appreciate you, man, brother. Um, but anyway, this woman knew what who her, her father was. And some of you guys might not have prison records, but they still know you a man. And so they put you in that situation, and then they just sleek behind that person. You understand me? You see? You see, they see you as an unpaid enforcer. You need to teach your daughters to be submissive wives instead of obstinate 304s, fellas. If your daughter is so insecure in a relationship that she feels the need that she needs to call you when there's a problem, she don't need to be in that relationship. Because in this situation, this man among many men is dead because his girlfriend, who he probably barely knew, pushed the daddy violence button. She pushed the crash out king button. She called in a simp enforcer. You see? To do what? To come react to her high emotional state. No woman is worth going to jail, brothers. No woman is worth going to jail. None of them. Especially if she could have de-escalated the situation or escaped the situation. See, parents should have better thinking skills than their children. Many men get calls like this to intervene in disputes between their daughter or their sister. And y'all come calling. My thing is this, when they don't listen to your advice beforehand, why should they be allowed to come running and rescue you when, when, when all hell hits the fan? See, there's always two sides to the story. Unfortunately, if it's your kinfolk, especially if you're female kin, you're probably going to be biased. Nevertheless, you show up armed and angry, and that's not going to lead to anything good because you place yourself in the proximity of the harm. And I'm trying to tell y'all, you're setting yourself up for, for a problem. Now, let me say this, and I want you to hear me clearly on this. I'm not going to defend my daughter from a man that she didn't allow me to pick for her. Let me repeat that. I am not going to put my life on the line, put my physical well-being for my daughter as a result of dealing with a man that did, she did not allow me to pick for her. And that's something I'm going to let my daughters know before they enter into the dating market. There's a reason why the Quran and the Bible require that the father vet his daughter's suitors before marriage. It's, it plays out symbolically when the father gives his bride away to her husband. In doing so, he's passing all her responsibilities over to the man, to the groom, to, to continue the father's legacy. You see? And with her, that man should be able to start his legacy while continuing to groom his new wife. Now, if she don't want your opinion, she doesn't want daddy's opinion, then she's on her own. Good luck. If that demand decides to pimp you out and give you some left hooks and right hooks to the chin and the upper torso, 
You chosen. Because see, if you don't give me the authority to pick this man or vet this man, don't come asking for my protection. Some of y'all are like, oh, that's so harsh. That's harsh, right? Somebody type harsh in the chat room. That's harsh. <laughs> what about my baby, my daughter? Shout out to Shia2882. Thank you so much for the cash app. That's harsh. See, here's the thing, fellas. Uh, <laughs> once your offspring, boy or girl, declares their independence, and they start wanting to make their own decisions, you don't owe them anything. Any woman choosing a man against her father's will or without his blessing, she's that's the beginning of rebellion right there. I don't care if they're 16 or 36. She will have earned her reward of dating a bum, an adulterer, or a heavy-handed abuser, etc. No decent father. No decent father wants his daughter to, uh, is not going to give his daughter permission to ride the uh, roller coaster, the rooster roller coaster, and seeking her husband, he's going to vet them well. Tell the truth. I want y'all to listen to tell the truth. Most of you American men, black, white, whatever, you never meet your female family member's boyfriends until it's a pregnancy or some allegation of, 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 uh, of a DV, right? That might be the first time you even hear that they even dating seriously when you hear about some pregnancy, another single mother in the making, or DV. It's true, right? Yet, Women, including your mothers, have met them all. The women in the family, they met them all. Your mother, she knows all of them. And the reason that they didn't let you meet these men is because they knew they were trash. Those women knew that the men that these women were dating were trash, and it was a phase. They also knew that the men in your family wouldn't approve. So they intentionally try to keep these men hidden. Yet, when a DV situation pops up, they expect you to fly in, uh, coming in off your simp helicopters like SWAT, you know, propelling down, you know what I'm saying? And heaven forbid she get pregnant, now you gotta go over there and play a uh, 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 uncle to this child who no longer has his daddy just shows up and disappears. And you gotta be the uncle explain to that. To your nephew or your niece. You now you're in a situation of playing surrogate daddy. Dad, you have you don't even know anything about this man. You, you, you fathers, look, have you had that conversation with you? Do we talk a lot about pookies and ray rays on these internet streets? Have you talked to your daughters about dating drug dealers and thugs? Have you had that conversation? As a black man, I talked to my sons about uh, how to deal with the police. We had that conversation. Have you, have you fellas had that conversation with your daughters about what type of men they're allowed to date? Did you let your daughter know that if you find out that she's dating some low caliber thug, you'd cut her off and never speak to her again? Huh? Did you? Some of y'all can't do it. Some of you fellas can't do that. But let me explain something to you. It's one father to another. You can't protect your children from their poor choices. See, women have been specifically selecting and choosing and involving themselves with deadbeats and monsters for about the past 60 years. They've been destroying families, making babies with men that shouldn't be fathers and, that, and at, a, at a time period when they shouldn't be mothers. And now you want, now these daughters want you to crash out because of their bad decisions. 
See, if instigated demise was a box that could be filled out on police reports, then we'd be able to accurately count how many men are unalive because of women and their mouths and their actions and their bad behavior and their lies. But that's not a box. Matter of fact, it should be a conspiracy charge, but even when situations like this occur, it's often overlooked. Let me tell you something about your daughter, fellas. And I'm quoting, I'm going to uh, quote the great, the great American uh, comic, uh, new to these YouTube streets, Mr. Corey Holcomb, when he says that every daughter on the planet belongs to the game. And that includes your daughter and your mother and your sisters. They all belong to the game, man. And some of you crash out kings. You say, I'm going, I'll go to the penitentiary about mine. You know how y'all talk. You know how y'all talk. I'm going to go down. I'll go down for mine. Go to the penitentiary. You see? But yours needs you to be safe. So, so you crash out on that one, right? And now you won't be able to see there. You won't be there to see your grandchildren born. You won't be there to protect your wife. What if some other problems pop up and you behind bars? So you crash out for this knucklehead daughter of yours that's in the game voluntarily. And now the rest of your family suffers because at the end of the day, the man is the central, the, the center of the family. Without the man, there ain't no engine. There's no heart. There's no mind. You understand? There's no leadership. So there's nothing. So you have no family. You just got some women and some kids. So you crash out. You as the king on the chessboard, you allow yourself to be taken and incarcerated. The game is over. How about you do this? How about you assess the situation first? Hmm? How about you be less emotional? Less quick to go run and get your guns and roll in blazing. Knowing how these chicks instigate problems. That includes your daughter. The only time you should be in a situation where you have to protect the women in your family or whoever in your family is if there's an imminent threat. You seeing it with your eyes, you're present when it happens. It, 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 it occurred suddenly, unexpectedly, without warning. Not you driving over there, putting gasoline next to the fire, and then wondering why everything exploded. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back, man. Y'all make sure y'all do what you got to do. I'll be right back. Going live in a minute. Blizzard King. This is winter. Dennis Sperling Podcast. You are rocking with the realest black men represented. Ain't no lies because we winning. Catching flies. Ain't no feelings. Uncle D, we the villain, baby. We just left the village, baby. Now we in them villas, baby. Dennis Sperling Podcast. Tuning in. We get it, baby. You can hate the player. Hate the game. We love all you haters. Hate watch. Hate watch. Calling lovely ladies. Hands on your knees. Bitch, bitch. You can thank us later. We snatching the crowns off a of queen. We obliterate them Tell the truth, chain the devil They trying to eliminate us You begging the sipping haters Peeling layers off potatoes Whoa, Southern Cadillac music like outcast Ain't jumping without bass Tennis burning podcast Whoa, Southern Cadillac music like outcast Ain't jumping without bass Tennis burning podcast Whoa. I want to see you win and I put pressure on us black on us men to understand how we did not get our masculinity training and we've been doing our work. OK, but now it's time for you ladies to understand you're going to have to bet on us like you want us to bet on you. I talked to I talked to several men this week. I don't just get on here and talk shit. I have men I call around the world and I ask. What do you think about this concept? Level set me. Shout out to brother uh, Dennis Sperling. Dennis, I'm not going to get, well, I don't want to tell people's business, but I'm going to tell you, high value men retire their women or make them come work for them. So ladies, what is it going to take? 
for you to free yourself because you and I both know you're dying at these jobs. You're in a toxic. All right, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Big shout out to everybody who contributed to the cash. A big shout out to Kevin Samuels. Uh, March 13th is his birthday. Um, I've uploaded a lot of different, um, uh, I guess, videos and such to celebrate that birthday, which is coming up. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys if, if um, you know, man, you check that out. Y'all go over to his page, which is run by his daughter. And uh, y'all, man, y'all make sure y'all go we give him a shout out on March 13th and uh, just acknowledge the man's presence in his work. You know, his work and my work are different. Uh, they did come together at, at a certain point when the brother was talking about rehabilitating the black community and pooling our resources. You know, I'm always down for the cause, man. If it's positive and it's moving forward. And I was a positive brother. He loved black people. He wanted to see black folks together. He wanted to see us happy. He wanted to see the community revitalized. So, you know, his life should be remembered, uh, especially on his birthday. So uh, shout out to Kevin Samuels. You guys type Kevin Samuels or type KS in the chat room. All my folks in the chat room, man, type KS in the chat room in remembrance of his March 13th, 2024 birthday. Y'all go ahead and do that for me right now, man. Just shout out to KS, man. We appreciate you. We miss you. Appreciate your work, man. Gone but not forgotten. Um, nevertheless, in uh, this particular subject, like I said, fellas, uh, we're talking about crash out kings. You understand? We're talking about crash out things and, and, and kings. And for you men out there, you you guys, um, like I said, the only time you should be defending a woman, your relatives at, at that, right, is if there's an imminent threat of danger. You understand? You see? You know, and, and you shouldn't be de defending women who are not honorable. And you know of your woman, you know of your sister, your mother, whoever is honorable. You know that. You see, and you need to be able to assess the threat. And if you're being used as an attack dog, you need to understand that you are a sucker. Let me tell you something else. You need to teach your daughters these lessons when she's five, not when she's 15 and 25. You need to start off early. See, this whole situation See, it speaks to a lack of parenting. That's what it speaks to. You see these honest conversations about the qualities of good men and what they should exhibit are necessary very early on. The games that men play, if she understood that, that would help her eliminate the goofballs and, and lowlifes before they even meet you. But at the end of the day, if she didn't involve you when the relationship was initiated, then she doesn't need to involve you when it becomes a problem. Here's the thing, fellas. And I know there's some ladies watching, so to the ladies and to the gentlemen, we, you know, this discussion today, I want you to take a moment and really reflect on what we've delved into. See, this story is a tragedy and it, it, no matter which way you cut it, and the way it unfolded between the father and his daughter and the boyfriend is a powerful mirror that needs to be held up, or it really it holds up a powerful mirror to the complexities and often misplaced priorities within our community. You see, at the heart of this narrative is a stark reminder of the consequences of our actions and the importance of accountability and the critical need for us to cultivate a deeper understanding of our roles and responsibilities, not just as individuals, but also as part of the larger fabric of society. As we navigate through life, it's imperative that we understand the gravity of the decisions we make, especially when it concerns the well-being of our loved ones. It's about recognizing that protection doesn't always mean retaliation, that love doesn't justify violence, and that the true strength is in wisdom to choose peace over confrontation. 
See, we got to ask ourselves, are we raising our girls to understand the value of communication, the importance of emotional intelligence, and the power of making choices that don't just serve the immediate, but rather the greater good? Hmm? Are we teaching our daughters to understand the difference between being protected huh, and being used or, 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 or using men as pawns in a game of ego and pride? As we reflect on this, let's also remember it's not too late to change the narrative. It's never too late to stand up and say, nah, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not going to allow you to use me as a crash out dummy to resolve your dispute. There's no glory in me being a, a dead, a, 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 a killer simp. Because all that does is glorify your toxic behavior under the guise of protection. And we're just perpetuating cycles of violence and hurt and misunderstanding. Let this story be a wake up call, fellas. A, a, a call to action to start having these difficult conversations and start setting examples that embody the values of respect and understanding standing and genuine care that we should be exhibiting as learned, educated, decent, hardworking men. See, I want you guys to remember it's up to us to recreate, rebuild the kind of community and the kind of society where tragedies like this are part of the past. And while little boys and girls, girls grow up in a world that values each other's life and cherishes peace and upholds dignity for all. I wanna thank you brothers for joining me this evening. I wanna give a big shout out to everybody who contributed to the Cash App and the Super Chat. Um, shout out to all my ice lords. Thank you, Black of the Day. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And as I always said this time, man, this is Uncle D, and I am out. Going live in a minute, Blizzard King. This is Winter Dennis Furlan Podcast. You are rocking with the realest black men represented. Ain't no lies, cause we winning. Catching flies, ain't no feelings. Uncle D, we the villain, baby. We just left the village, baby. Now we in them villas, baby. Dennis Furlan Podcast. Tune in and we get it, baby. You can hate the player, hate the game. We love all you haters. Hate watch, hate watch. Calling lovely ladies. Hands on your knees. You can thank us later. We snatching the crowns off of queens. We obliterate them. Tell the truth, train the devil. They trying to eliminate us. You better Begging the sipping haters, peeling layers off potatoes. Whoa, Southern Cadillac music like outcast. Ain't jumping without bass. Tennis burning podcast. Whoa. Southern Cadillac music like outcast. Ain't jumping without bass. Tennis burning podcast. Whoa.